Okay, so today we're going to talk about compressive and tensile failure in vertical wells. Um, basically, for the last few weeks, we've been learning about how rocks fail, uh, either in compression uh, due their, to their constitutive response. We learned about a lot of con constitutive material models and failure models. Um, or in, in tension or shear, we talked about a little bit in the last uh, previous class before spring break. So now that we sort of know something about the strength of rock or the rock properties, if we can resolve the stress in the wellbore, then we can determine if there's going to be some type of wellbore failure. And then we can maybe engineer some way to uh, stabilize the wellbore, typically during drilling. Um, today we're just going to talk about vertical wellbores, um, but then these techniques that we'll talk about today, they extend to deviated wellbores, which we know how to resolve the stresses in uh, through those matrix transformations, right? So once we sort of know the stress in the wellbore, then all the same ideas apply for deviated wells as, as well. So we're going to start with a solution to this uh, stress around a circular cavity. This goes back I think this was done in like 1896, and in fact, I think that picture uh, was drawn, it was taken from the original paper in 1896, so it's a pretty nice picture from, to be hand drawn, obviously that wasn't drawn on a computer in 1896, right? so uh, there's a guy named Kirsch that developed this solution uh, for the stress, stresses around a wellbore, um, um, well, around a circular cavity. Subject to some far field stress. <clears throat> uh, we won't go through the derivation because that would take about the entire class. Uh, but if you'd like to see it uh, in the, uh, not the Zoback book, but the second reference uh, that I, that's on the syllabus, uh, the, the Jaeger book, there's a few pages of derivation in that book if you'd like to see where the equations come from. But basically, the uh, the stresses, I mean, the contours of stresses are roughly uh, like you see there, where you see uh, areas of high compression, then the contours are com more compressed, and where you see divergence, then there's not as much uh, stress in that area. So the actual equations then are this, where I'm using our convention that, that uh, we've been using that sigma is uh, the stress, in, in this case these are tensors, minus the pore pressure, okay? So I think in Zoback's book he, he uses uh, just the, the, the stress. Th this is a formula for uh, actually including the effect of stress or the effect of the pore pressure. Uh, this is from Jaeger. And what A is here is the radius of the wellbore. So obviously these are components of the stress tensor in polar coordinates where R is the radial distance. Um, so let me draw it like this. So R is the radial distance from the center of the circle or well bore to some point that you want to compute the stress at. This is the angle theta. So right hand positive measured from the horizontal. And A is the radius of the well bore. Okay. I don't know why some of these fractions don't show up. Um, PW is uh, the pressure, the basically the mud mud weight, the pressure in the well bore.
And we, this is the standard pore pressure. So later you might see me write this term as delta P, right? So it's the, the difference in the well bore pressure and the pore pressure. <clears throat> Okay. So here's an example, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't have time to scan the color copy uh, that's in the in the book. So if you if you own the book, there's an insert in the middle of the book, about 20 pages, that has color figures, because the rest of the figures are black and white. I guess they really cheaped out when they wanted to print the book. Uh, because most of the figures are black and white, and then they only printed like 20 pages in color. It's pretty annoying, but <laughs> so this figure is in color in the middle of the book if you want to see it in color. But basically, I, I think you can you can still get the idea. Um, you know, if it was in color, it would be like thermometer colors, blue to red, uh, hot and cold, right? Areas of high stress and low stress. Um, but here it sort of goes from. Uh, you know, a dark to to light or color, and unfortunately, it's dark on both ends. Uh, but anyway, check it out in the book if you want to see the color figure. If I have time, I might scan it and replace this one. By the way, we're in. Uh, I know you guys want to like to know where we're at in the book, but we're in tra chapter six. Okay. So if you basically just plug these values into those formulas, where again, those formulas had the effective stress, so that's equal to these values of stress minus the pore pressure. If you just plug it into those, those formulas and then you compute uh, the stress distribution, then you'd get this nice color map here. Okay. And what you see so this is along the azimuth of SH min. So this is the vertical. This is a, a plot along the vertical, OK, on the left. along the horizontal, okay? And the radial distance has been normalized. So basically, uh, it's been normalized such that um, A over R is equal to 1, okay? So at, at 1, you're at the wellbore, okay? And as you go along the x-axis, you're moving farther away from the wellbore. So in, in other words, you can think of these, um, uh, the x-axis here as diameters, okay? So at one diameter, you're right at the wellbore, uh, but at one and a half diameters, you're you know, one and a half, I'm sorry, radius. One and a half radius is away. Right? And so on the right-hand side is the far field stress indicated. And so what you see here is that there's a stress riser, a stress concentration at the wellbore, right? At the wellbore, there's a stress riser that's much higher. In this case, you know, right at the wellbore, almost three times larger than the far field stress. And even a distance one and a half radius is away, it's still almost twice the far field stress, okay? So there's a very high region of stress around the wellbore amplified by the fact that there's a circular hole there, right? okay? So these can lead to breakouts. If you look at, if you look at the variation, I think we actually, earlier in the class, we actually in class computed a, a plot like this for a deviated wellbore, right? But if you look at the variation of the different stresses, okay, um, 
sigma ZZ essentially oscillates around the far field stress. So these are for the same values of that problem. So if you remember that, the, the far field value was like 58 and a half or something, MPA. So the, the sigma ZZ basically oscillates around it. And it's the hoop stress that is maximal, right? And so if the hoop stress exceeds the strength of the rock, and it's typically in compression, although it can happen in tension as well, then you'll have breakouts. Right? So you've exceeded the strength of the rock. The st when I say strength of the rock, as determined by some failure model. Okay? Now, I'll show you an example today uh, using more Coulomb, but we also learned about many other failure models too. Right? The Hope Brown, CAP models, I think you know, those of you who weren't here, we, we talked about a few other models on that last day, Sandia, Geo model, other things. But so if the hoop stress exceeds the strength of the rock as defined by the material model, then you're going to have a breakout in that region. 